The problem with free shaping is twofold, and the, one of the reasons we do much more assisted shaping than free shaping. The first problem with free shaping is, one, it is less efficient. It takes longer to get to the process. So if I were trying to teach my dog to put his feet on a target, for instance, I could lure my dog onto that target several times and get the dog in the ballpark, get the dog kind of uh, performing an approximation of the behavior, reward them for getting their feet on it, and, and speed that process up significantly. In free shaping, I have to be more patient. Uh, the timing is very important, and the dog has to be very persistent uh, in the process, otherwise they have a tendency to give up. If they don't get enough rewards, or the rate of reinforcement is not high enough, or their motivation is not high enough, then it's possible that they don't figure out what I want them to figure out and they give up. So the efficiency of the process is one thing that we are concerned with. The second thing is that people that are devotees of free shaping have a tendency to ignore the wrong behavior and simply reward the right behavior. The problem with this is that when we go to add duration to our behaviors, we get finished obedience behaviors, and uh, we want those dogs to do those behaviors for longer periods of time. If the dog goes for a period uh, without a reward, the dog tends to think that they are wrong uh, or that this behavior no longer works in getting them a reward, and they have a tendency to offer other behaviors. And so when we want dogs to persist in certain specific behaviors for extended periods of time, a free-shaped dog, or a dog with a lot of free shaping, has a tendency to try other things when they don't get rewards, and it can make impulse control slightly difficult. The other thing that we struggle with a little bit with free shaping is if we change the context. So you've heard us talk a lot about generalization and the difficulty in generalizing certain types of behaviors. Meaning, and generalization is simply when you teach a dog a concept and when you change the picture of that concept, I teach my dog to sit in front of me, then I need to teach my dog to sit beside me, I need to teach my dog to sit at a distance, I need to teach my dog to sit while he's moving, I need to teach the dog to sit while I'm moving, I need to teach the dog to sit with my back to the dog, etc. right? Every time I change that picture, it, it's possible that the dogs struggle with the concept. And if you've free shaped, there, you've had no help from the handler. So if I change the picture and the dog fails to do the behavior I prompt, then I don't have a way of helping them do it. And I'm back to shaping again, or free shaping again at that point in time. Now, each time it should get easier for you, but still, that you have no way of intervening and helping the dog be correct. If I have done assisted shaping, where I've used luring and spatial pressure and the other tools we've talked about to help the dog do the behaviors, if the dog struggles at any point in there, then I have a tool in place, my physical prompt, my physical help, to help the dog be successful in the new situation. And so I find assisted shaping more efficient. I find it easier later on when we add duration to the behavior uh, to not have the dog continually offering new behaviors when they don't get rewards, when we reduce the rate of reinforcement. And I like having in place a physical tool to help the dog if they struggle in a new place. Part of the problem that people have with dogs with lower levels of motivation is the fact that they won't persist when they make a lot of mistakes. And anything that I can do to help the dog from making excessive numbers of mistakes in the early phases of training keeps them involved in the activity and keeps them persisting in trying to learn and trying to work with me.